And in the interest of thank yous, I would like to thank Spring Arbor College and Lean Rocket Lab for bringing us together. They are two of my collaborators on this journey, and uh, they got me out of Southeast Michigan. And I'd like to thank you for being here and investing your time, taking time out of your day, and I hope to impact a few lives today. We will see, but on that note, if you will please shake the person's hand on your right and left and say goodbye. Please, please, say, shake the person's hand. Goodbye, goodbye, see you later. Arrivederci, sayonara, goodbye, goodbye. I ask you to say goodbye to each other because if we do our jobs together in the next hour and 15 minutes, you will not walk out of this room the same people that walked in. What I mean by that is the overriding goal of this conversation we're about to have is to increase the odds of success, is to increase the odds of startups succeeding, because the odds are horrible. They're absolutely horrible. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce you to a context. I'm going to help you understand. I'm going to help you see it and understand what it is, how it works, what it takes to be an entrepreneur. And you're going to make a decision. Because the way we're going to increase the odds is some of you are going to tap out. You're going to realize this is not for you. And if it's not, there's like a thousand other career options. <laughs> Contrary to what the world is teaching you, being an entrepreneur is not all it's cracked up to be. And it's not the only career option. So some of you will tap out. That's OK. And some of you are going to get a tap on the shoulder today. Some of you are going to learn why God puts you on the face of this earth, the 4% that are entrepreneurs. It's a tough life, but you're going to realize that that is what you are. So that's how we're going to increase the odds. You see, I come from the future. <laughs> Your future. 36 years ago, I was sitting there as an 18-year-old, lost, scared, insecure, a mislabeled derelict. I didn't know what I was. I was an entrepreneur in the making. I was so different than everybody else. I felt different. They all went off to college. I didn't go. We'll talk about that in a minute. Don't get pissed <laughs> off at me yet. So I realized what I was at 29 years old. It took me 11 years. I lost 11 years of clarity. And for whoever you are out there, it doesn't matter the age. It was 18 for me. You could be 28, 38, 58, 60, wherever you are. 36 years ago, I was there. 29, I realized what it was. Lost 11 years of clarity, and I want to help you get a jump start on that. There's an old saying that says, we teach what we needed the most, from Daniel Kennedy. And that's what I'm doing. This is a passion project. EOS has been very, very good to me. So I have the luxury of now spending half of my working time on a passion project and get this message to the world and find the 4% so you're no longer lost and you know what you are, and then help the ones that aren't find a different path. So we teach what we needed the most. I'm teaching my 18-year-old self in all of that pain, which are some of you in this room. We teach what we needed the most. And on this journey, I'm joining forces with collaborators like these two that teach this content to the world, because I can't do it all. We have 120 of them now, and we're putting a real nice dent in the universe, and we're just getting started. The goal is to impact a million entrepreneurs in the making in the next 10 years slash eight years. We're two years in, so eight years to go. So on that, I want to set the stage for you, okay? So I want to really create a nice little context at the stage for you. So a couple of things I want to share. First of all, this conversation, this message, what I'm going to share with you is for entrepreneurs in the making, okay? And so if you came here thinking I'm going to talk about EOS stuff, you came to the wrong place. If every once in a while somebody sneaks in thinking that's what I'm going to talk about, that's not what I'm going to talk about. And so if you came here to learn how to run a business, like a Swiss watch, that's a different room. That's not me. 
just managing expectations. Number two, the objective is to help you start a better startup. At the end of the day, that's what it's all about. And so I'm gonna speak for about an hour, and then when I'm done, we're gonna open it up for Q&A. Q&A is my favorite thing on the planet, okay? And so you got me here. Be really selfish. And so it's gonna move really fast, this content. You have a workbook in front of you. We're gonna work from that workbook. You're gonna write a lot, but when questions come to mind, pick your notes page that you wanna capture your questions because that question's gonna flash in and you're gonna lose it. If you're a true entrepreneur in the making, you're gonna lose it in about two minutes, okay? So write it down fast. Write it down fast. Pick your questions page. 15 minutes of Q&A. And then the context I keep talking about. So there's three parts to what I'm gonna teach you. And everything that's about to come out of my mouth is in that book in front of you. So what's the name of the credit union? American One Credit Union. My understanding is they bought you those books, okay? So that's my understanding. I don't know, but that's what I heard. So they gave you a gift. And everything that's about to come out of my mouth and a whole heck of a lot more is in that book. And so if you're like, oh, what did he say? And you didn't write it fast enough? I promise you it's all in the book. Because if this is for you, please, that is your operating manual. Devour that book. Absorb that book. Study that book. But in that book, and what we're about to do, there's three parts to the content, and they're in a very specific order. And I call it confirm, glimpse, and pass. And so we're going to simply confirm whether you are or not. I'm gonna show you a glimpse of all that is possible and then a path for how to get there. And then the last thing in setting the stage, just so I know my audience here, is I wanna do two polls very quickly, okay? And please, hands high on these questions, just because I'm trying to get a sense. So poll number one is, I'm gonna ask you three questions, okay? And so please raise your hand, how many are 100% convinced you know you're an entrepreneur in the making. Just please, hands high, hands high. Great, thank you for that. How many are on the fence? You think you might be, it's intriguing, maybe it's me, I don't know. How many are kind of on the fence? Hands high, please. Thank you for that. And how many of you absolutely know you are absolutely not an entrepreneur in the making? Please, hands high. Thank you for that honesty. Awesome. So we're like a third, third, and a third. I kind of like that. So here we go. I'm assuming with the clicker I didn't practice the green button on top, right? Well, we're going to find out right now. So here we go. Now we're going to get to work. Confirm, glimpse, path. So, all right, I'm hitting green button on top. I just, my instincts told me something wasn't going to work here. You got to love technology. The right. Well, of course, the arrow going this way. All right, so here we go. One more time. Confirm, glimpse, path. A little deeper. Confirm is where we are going to confirm whether you were born to do this or not. A true entrepreneur has six essential traits. You're born with them. They can't be taught. And I'm going to help you scan your body today to figure out if you have those six. Assuming we confirm that, and again, if we confirm you don't, please, that's freeing. You get to check the box. That's not the career option. There's 999 other ones for you. From there, though, we go to Glimpse. And I'm just going to put the third one up here as well. We go to Glimpse. And Glimpse is where I'm going to show you the life. You're going to see it. You're going to understand what it's all about. You're going to see all of your options. And it's going to light you up. And you're going to be ready to run. But then I'm going to pull back on the reins a little bit, because don't run just yet, because then we're going to go to path, and I'm going to show you a path that will literally eliminate half the mistakes you're about to make, because every entrepreneur makes them. And so we're going to head them off at the pass, and secondarily, we're going to greatly increase your odds of success. So, taking them one at a time, if you'll please turn to your workbooks now, you're going to turn to page... Three, and just write what comes to mind. You don't have to write, but it's time to now scan your bodies and see if you're an entrepreneur in the making. 
And so here we go. We're going to do two passes at this, okay? First, a very high-level pass, and then we're going to go a little bit deeper. And so what are the six essential traits? They are visionary, passionate, problem solver, driven, risk taker, and responsible, which means you blame no one. Scanning your body. You're born with them. You can't be taught. Half the world agrees with me. Half don't. So the ones that don't agree with me, I hope I'm wrong. I pray I'm wrong. I'm not wrong. <laughs> but I hope I'm wrong. Prove me wrong. Prove that 7.5 billion people on a planet can all become entrepreneurs and they have these six essential traits. You'll lose the debate. I'll debate it to my death, but I'll give once somebody proves me wrong. I'm a pretty flexible guy once you prove me wrong. So I say that I'm so obsessive about that is because some of you want it so bad. Because your mom was an entrepreneur, your dad was an entrepreneur, your best buddy is an entrepreneur. And you want it. And everybody's writing about entrepreneurs and it seems so cool. It's a tough life. So I'm just trying to help you because what I believe, if you don't have the six essential traits, I'm saving lives, not breaking hearts. I'm saving you 10 years of sheer hell. So let's go a little deeper. So what do I mean? Let's take them again, a little deeper. Jot down whatever resonates with you. You don't have to write anything down. But when I say visionary, visionary means you just have lots of ideas. You're just kind of ideas. It's OK if they're bad ideas. Most of them are, but you just have ideas. You just keep seeing stuff. And so, oops. Got ahead of myself. Uh, you're able to connect the dots, and so you kind of like put things together. You have this sixth sense. It's almost like weird, and you see around corners. Okay, so you just you have lots of ideas. Passionate means that you have this undying passion for your product or your service or this thing you want to bring to the world. You may not know what that passion is yet, but it'll come, it'll come, but it's for the thing that you're bringing to the world, for your product, for your service. I'm not saying you're passionate. I'm saying you have passion for the thing. Strong belief in what it is that you want to bring to the world. You want to fill some void. Problem solver means that you're a creative problem solver. You, when you get hit with a setback, you lean into it. Where most of the world runs from their problems, you lean into it. It's weird because you like get energized when somebody puts a problem in front of you. You're optimistic. Every cloud has a silver lining. And you see solutions where the rest of the world is seeing problems. Driven means that you have this internal fire, this sense of urgency, this competitive nature. You want to win. You want to succeed. You're self-motivated. You hustle. Risk taker means that you don't freeze when it's time to make a tough decision. So when faced with that tough decision, you don't suffer from analysis paralysis. You just make the tough decision and you go forward. You're rebellious by nature. A stop sign is merely a suggestion to you. You tend to beg for forgiveness instead of ask for permission. And you're willing to fail. You don't want to fail. Failing stinks, but you're willing to fail. And you know failure is all part of this process. And then last, responsible, which always throws people for a curve because the first five, man, those really make sense. But responsible, how does that fit? How does that work? And so that just means you blame no one. When something bad happens to you, when you have a problem, you go to the third bullet point, just kind of default to looking in the mirror. You look at yourself, you say, this is my problem to solve. There's two types of people in the world. When something bad happens to them, half the world takes responsibility. This is my problem to solve. The other half of the world blames everyone else for their problems. This is vital. The reason I know this one is nature over nurture, you're born with it, DNA, is think about your family. How on earth can they be raised in the same house same parents, same everything, yet half of them take responsibility, half don't. Nature over nurture. I'm not making this stuff up. So with that, this is where I need Ryan and Laurel to help me with what I asked them to help with. I created an assessment, okay? It's called the Entrepreneur in the Making Assessment. And you're about to take that assessment now, and please don't start yet because I'm trying to make this as efficient, fast, and productive as possible while still getting the result. Because we don't have 30 minutes for you to fill out the assessment, but here's the beauty. It only takes four minutes, if you do it right. 
So if you turn the page, please don't start answering. You're going to answer 25 questions about yourself. Don't read them yet. Fight everything, all urge. Look at me. <laughs> so before you write, because I'm going to take you through each one. And as I take you through each one, I want you to answer it quickly. But here's where I need you. You got to get out of this thing. You got to get out of your ego. You got to get out of your head and get down in here, okay? Your gut, your soul, okay? So I'm filling you full of truth serum right now. You're not allowed to lie to yourself like your ego wants to do. And just answer with your gut. It will take you one second. Your gut knows. Answer it from your soul. Here we go. Four is strongly agree. One is strongly disagree. Answer it as I read it. Here we go. I am competitive. I want to make a lot of money. Go with your gut. Nothing wrong with making a lot of money. Enough of this crap. What happened? Used to be a good thing. Number three, I work harder than other people. I have a lot of ideas. Again, they can be bad. I have lots of bad ones. Number five, I am self-motivated, driven, and I have a strong sense of urgency. Number six, I have a lot of energy. Number seven, I am very passionate. Number eight, I am very responsible. Go with your gut. Somebody's ego's creeping back in. True serum and bourbon, let it go. Number nine, I make tough decisions faster than most. Number 10, I am good at persuading people to do things. You've been doing these things your whole life, everybody. Think back. Number 11, I enjoy setting goals and am goal-oriented. Number 12, I love to grow and learn. Just answer quickly. Number 13, I am a good leader. People tend to follow me. Number 14, I am impatient. So if you're tapping the steering wheel in the drive-thru, if you're standing in line going, what in the hell is going on up there? Good chance you're rating a four on that one. Number 15, I am rebellious. Number 16, I am a strategic thinker. Go with your gut. Number 17, I am a creative problem solver. Number 18, I immediately blame myself when something goes wrong. You look to yourself when something goes wrong, not at others. Number 19, I get bored easily. Number 20, I always see the big picture. Number 21, I have street smarts and common sense. Number 22, I am comfortable taking risks. Number 23, I am very independent. Number 24, I am optimistic. And number 25, if I fail, I try again. Just answer it. Okay, so now you've all answered. Follow my lead here, everybody. We're going to column one, and you're going to add up how many number ones you marked. So please follow my lead. I'm trying to make this fast, efficient, and productive. So count up your ones, and you're going to put them in the box, the big box at the end of the number one column. How many ones? And you can get ahead of me on this one if you like. Go to number two now. Count up how many number twos. I'm just going to look at a couple people to see where you are because I don't want to go too fast. And again, it's okay to get ahead of me on this one. All right, go to number three now. How many number threes? Ooh, some of you are fast. And how many number fours? So add up your fours. Obviously, you're going to put those numbers in those four big boxes. And you're going to add those four big boxes together. And then again, Laurel and Ryan, the clock stops when I get a total, okay? Add those four boxes, and then you're going to write the number in. I 
I need you all caught up and done, so don't be shy. Does anyone need more time? If you need it, it's okay, but you gotta have your math. And ask, ask a neighbor if you need a little help, I get it. I have to help one out of 10 people do this math. You're in good company. I think we may have found our first entrepreneur in the making because she didn't follow any direction. You are going to be amazing. All right, are you caught up? Are you good? Good? All right, so I'm going to lead into this next part. Help her out if she needs it. So you've gotten a number now. Come back to me, everybody. Come back to me. Come back to me. So you've gotten your number. Here is my belief, OK? Just my belief. Come back to me, come back to me, come back to me. Here is my belief, one man's opinion. Take it with a grain of salt. I believe if you score 90 or higher, you are probably an entrepreneur in the making. If you score less, you're probably not. But you get to decide, come back to me, whoever's having a sidebar back there, come back to me. Not fair to the people around you, come back to me. Less than 90, you're probably not. Prove me wrong. You get to decide. So this is up to you. I'm just trying to get you to be honest with yourself. I'm trying to get you to scan your body, I'm trying to save you from 10 years of hell, as we talked about. So now I want to take a little sting off, OK? So if you'll turn the page, I created something called the Entrepreneurial Range in a fierce debate with a professor of entrepreneurship in a Starbucks three years ago. And the conclusion I came to, and this came, it just flashed into my mind. And so the Entrepreneurial Range works like this. On the far left side of the range are the words self-employed. On the far right side of the range are the words true entrepreneur. And so the point is, Anyone that owns their own business is somewhere on this range. It's just that self-employed are the people that are one-person shows, they have a side hustle, they're a freelancer, they're a sole proprietor, self-employed. On the far left side are the greatest entrepreneurs of all time. Elon Musk, Oprah Winfrey, Henry Ford, Sarah Blakely, Walt Disney. So anyone that wants to own their own business, you're going to be somewhere on this entrepreneur range. It doesn't mean you can't own your own business. The best example I can give you, if you have handy skills, if you're handy, you could go out and become a handy man or a handy woman, charge 60 bucks an hour, make six figures a year for the rest of your life, and if you're any good, you will be busy for the next 30 years, making six figures, fully free and independent, and self-employed. It's just that if you have these six essential traits, you will not be able to stop yourself from going, man, if I hire somebody for 25 bucks an hour, I can go get one more job, and I can do this, and you're gonna end up with a construction company, okay? But the point is, it's okay if you stay over here. So it's not a death sentence to score less than 90. It's just unlikely you're gonna build an organization with lots of people, pretty unlikely. So now here's what I want you to do. I want you to put a dash on the line because here's where I am. I'm about right there. I'm not an Elon Musk. I don't want to be an Elon Musk. So put a dash on the line as to where you really think you are if you want to own your own business. Be really honest. We're being sold a bill of goods. Building a billion dollar tech unicorn is not all it's cracked up to be. Okay? Becoming a Dan Gilbert in Detroit is not all it's cracked up to be. I always like to say there's nothing wrong with building a $4 million heating and cooling company with 20 people and dominating your market. You're making a ton of money. Anyway, you get the point. <clears throat> Half a million bucks a year, it's a good gig. So, that's confirmed. Only you can decide. I can't tell you, he can't tell you, she can't tell you, you got to decide, is this right for me? So now that we've confirmed, we're now moving to Glimpse. What I do in Glimpse, and again, everything I'm saying is in the book, what I do in Glimpse is I'm giving you a glimpse because if I believe if I can get your mind to see it, all that is possible. 
all of the options, you just increased your odds of success. And so I do three things in the glimpse part of the book. The first thing I do is I share countless real world stories of people who were right where you are right now at this moment and how they built what they built. Countless stories, because we need those. That's what motivates us, inspires us, gives us kind of a roadmap. Number two is that I show you a day in the life, good and bad, and the eight critical mistakes that almost every entrepreneur makes and how to solve them. And then the third thing I do is I show you all of your options, because every entrepreneur is not built to build every company. There's literally something you're drawn to. There's literally a type of business you're meant to build. And hopefully today I'm going to help you see that very clearly. Every tool I'm talking about is available and downloadable on the website. So just know any tool I'm referencing, it's in the book, it's on the website. But here we go. Oh, I'm having so much fun right now. So what I like to do first, because I'm going to those eight critical mistakes, and I want to show you a contrast, because I want you to show you a day in the life when it's really good and it's really bad. And sadly, most entrepreneurs are living the really bad. There's the nightmare, there's the dream. There's a day in hell, there's a day in heaven. And I'm trying to get you over here. So here's what a day in the life in terms of the dream looks like for an entrepreneur that gets this right, avoids the mistakes. They wake up at the time that works best for their body and their energy, we're all different. Some entrepreneurs wake up at four in the morning, some wake up at nine, doesn't matter. Ones that wake up at nine, work their asses off till midnight, just so you know it's not like you still get to. <laughs> you have committed, passionate employees that are fully engaged. You meet with your team weekly and you look forward to those meetings and they're energy. You know, look at that. It's so, there's energy, we're happy, we're passionate, we're debating. This is one of our clients right here. I just love that look on your face. That's why I wrote the book. You spend time with your customers and so you're out there interacting with customers and learning from them. You solve problems, you work on exciting projects, you pay yourself and your people fairly, everybody's making good money, you distribute profits, hopefully to your people and your partners, and, and you get home with time and energy for your family and friends. That's the dream, and it's a reality, because that's what we're helping all of our EOS clients do. Then there's the nightmare. The nightmare, is when you have unengaged, dispassionate employees, they're just showing up for a check, can't wait to punch the clock and get out of there. They, you avoid each other, everybody, whoa, the last thing you wanna do is make eye contact in that organization. You meet only when there's a crisis, so there's a problem, we all gotta come together. It's unclear what the roles and responsibilities are, so everybody's tripping all over each other. You're working 24-7, you're, you're charging the lowest price because that's the only way you can keep the business. It's the only reason your customers and clients are there because you're the lowest price in town. And as soon as somebody ever cuts you, you're gone. And your family and friends are fed up. They're just sick of it. You're not there. You're not there. That's the nightmare. And that's the nightmare that most entrepreneurs are living. That's the state of most clients that come to us in EOS because they made all eight critical mistakes on their way up as they built their company. So I think it's high time I share those eight critical mistakes with you that you must avoid. So obviously, corresponding page to everything I teach you, and it's all in the book. But what we're going to do here, the idea is I'm going to move through them kind of fast because I'm trying to create awareness more than anything else. I'm trying to get you to feel this. And so same thing. Don't get so logical about capturing every word because it's all in the book. I want you to feel it. If I can get you to feel it and see it, odds are you'll avoid these mistakes. And I had the luxury when I started EOS Worldwide and decided to build and leverage it, I had the luxury of 15 years of turning a family business around, helping 50 companies, so I knew the mistakes and I avoided every single one of them and you can too, I'm living proof. So here are the eight critical mistakes you must avoid when you start your business as you grow your business. Number one, is not having a vision. So the mistake is that the entrepreneur comes up with a product, comes up with a service, lots of passion, and they just start selling stuff and adding people, and they're just going and going, and all the people are just following this incredible, inspirational, charismatic person. 
Things are confusing, wonky. Got to have a vision. I'm going to show you how to solve that today. But typically, they don't have a vision. Number two is you're hiring the wrong people. They're hiring the wrong people. So same story. They sell a few things. They're generating revenue. All of a sudden, they reach capacity. and They need a person. They got to get a person. And so they grab the closest one they can in their life. So they hire their brother, their sister, their mom, their dad, their best friend, their cousin, and just throw them into the business. Get back to work. Then you reach capacity and just grab another one that's closest to you. Get another one, another one. And you find yourself with five, 10, 20 people, and they're not the right people. That's the other thing we're doing for our clients is cleaning up that mess. Because the solution is, as you go forward and you reach capacity and you need a person, you need to put on the brakes, breathe, and do two things. Only hire people that have your core values. I'm going to show you how to discover those in just a little bit here. And only hire people that have the skill set for the seat you're trying to fill. It's that simple. But to grab the body, throw them in there, and they're just working, it's going to get really ugly in a year or two. So make sure they have your core values. Make sure they have the skill set to do the job in the seat that they're in. Oh, it's going to be like magic. More on that as we build upon all of this. The third critical mistake is not spending time with your people. So again, hard charging entrepreneur, you're going, you're going, you're going, you're doing great stuff, you're selling a lot of stuff, customers love it, you got people, but you're not spending time with them. And so one of the number one issues we hear when a client comes to us is communication, communication, communication. 80% of the clients, the biggest issue on the board is communication. We're not communicating. I was trying to find you to point to as well. So it's really simple. I'm going to give you this solution right here and now because it's so simple. But as an entrepreneur, all you simply need to do is meet with your people as you're starting your business. Meet with your people every week. Meet with your people every 90 days. And give feedback quickly. Do those three things and you will wipe out 85% of your communication issues. It's powerful. All in the book. Don't have to write a million things down. Number four is not knowing who your customer is. And so the typical entrepreneur, they're like, wow, they like it. They like it. They bought it. They like it. And so they go out and they try and sell that thing to everyone on the planet and take this buckshot approach to the world. And so how did I write this down? This was this morning's inspiration. So you're trying to sell gas to a woman with an electric vehicle. So you're spending money, you're making her aware, every whatever, you're hitting her every day in an email or whatever, however you're marketing, boom, 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 the wrong person. That's money, that's time, that's people, that's energy. Your job is to know exactly who your customer is. Demographic, geographic, psychographic, who are they, where are they, what are they, I'm going to talk more about that in a little bit, you don't have to write all that down, and it's in the book. But you got to know who you're going after in the world because if you only have $50 to spend on sales and marketing, $500, 5,000, 50,000, 5 million, you got to put the dollars and the energy and the people on that target market. And every ounce of your being needs to go into that. Not that, nothing personal, okay? <laughs> <sighs> Number five, not charging enough. So this is a psychological issue. Some of you have a psychological issue. You don't feel worthy, you don't feel worth it. And almost every entrepreneur undercharges for their value, for their service, for their product. So write this name down, Casey Brown. Amazing TED Talk. She's a pricing guru. And she'll help you understand that psychology and help you teach your customers and clients how valuable you are. Because literally, you're, you're a 10% price increase from being in business or being out of business. Because right now, most entrepreneurs, you just price it enough to break even or lose a little bit of money. 10% price increase. All of a sudden, you go from break even to dropping 10% to the bottom line. So they just are not charging enough. Dan Sullivan has a great, his discipline says, so you think about your product or service. Think about a price to charge for that that like scares the heck out of you and add 20%. <laughs> genius. That's genius. Not staying true to your core. And so what happens here is, again, the entrepreneur is selling stuff, clients love them, going well. And let's hypothetically pretend the core is that entrepreneur will use this same example all day. They want to build a $4 million 
heating and cooling company with 20 people that throws off a 20% profit, and you go forward and you do that. And to do that, it is so hard. But here they are, they're reaching a level of success, and all of a sudden a competitor, two cities over, you could buy them. So you buy it, because it's shiny. And then over there, and then over there, and then over here. So you were supposed to have one location, four million, 20 people, sweet spot, make it 800 grand a year, life is good. But you, now you have five locations, 20 million, 100 people, and you're like, ugh. And I'm going to explain this to you. You are built for something. And so when you get away from your core, all of a sudden you're in plumbing and electrical. Well, we're in the house, and we're turning wrenches in there, so we might as well do the plumbing and the electrical while we're in there. And what the heck, let's take care of their gutters too while we're at it. So now you got four expertise that you need to master. Enough said there. <clears throat> number seven is not knowing your numbers. So simple. So, this is why you're going to be amazing. Most entrepreneurs with these six essential traits suck at finances and understanding the numbers and the money, and most of them die broke. I hope that doesn't happen to you. But when you're not real good at the math in terms of the is a good sign that you might be you. No guarantees. You scored yourself. It's up to you. But the point here is three simple things here. I'm going to give you this solution right here and now. As you grow your business, the day you start it, you just need to review a monthly P&L, review a monthly budget projected to actual, and review your five to 15 most important numbers every single week. Just do that. And if you don't know what any of those things mean, and you're not good at that, hire somebody that does. When you start your business, you can literally get a fractional CFO to work two hours a week for you. You could probably afford it, hopefully you can, but you don't have to become an expert at that. Hopefully you will become relatively good at it. But there's your solution right there. And number eight, not crystallizing roles and responsibilities. And the common mistake here is just keep adding people, Everybody's tripping all over each other. You're literally half as efficient as you could be because everybody's chipping in all for one, one for all. We're all chipping in together. Couldn't disagree more. Your job is to have an org chart that clearly illustrates the functions of the business. And if it's you and only you, then you're in all those seats. The second you add somebody to the organization, you're going to put them in a seat with clear roles and responsibilities, so they are hyper-focused on what they're supposed to do. When you add the next person, clear roles, next person, clear roles, next person, and then you're all literally laser-focused and twice as productive, twice as efficient. Very, very powerful. <clears throat> Number two, I'm just going to do a little time check here. So I just want to confirm, time-wise, do we have an absolute hard stop at 115? I just need to know that, and if you just tell me yes, if that's true. Okay, so I'm gonna move a little fast on something else here because I wanna do my best to get to Q&A by one. Um, but here's what I'm talking about, your options. Okay, and so I created a tool called My Biz Match. Turn to that page if you're not there already. Page eight. This is the point where you are built for something. You're drawn to something. Every entrepreneur is not made to build every business. And I'm going to help you figure out the right one for you. This is on the website, and you just click a bunch of buttons, but I'm going to educate you right now. It's also in the book. Don't feel like you have to write a bunch. But when we talk about your options, you've got to decide the industry that you love, the type of business you want to build, and the size of business you want to build. And like I said, you're going to click a bunch of buttons. It takes about 20 minutes. And you're going to get an answer. But here's how it works, and jot down anything that comes to mind, feel it more than intellectually get caught up in it. So here goes. First thing is, there are hundreds of industries to choose from. In this exercise, in the interest of expert, I'm going to use me as the example every time. The industry I love is education. I love to teach. That's, I'm a teacher. That's my destiny. That's what I discovered at 29. That's the industry I'm going to be in as an entrepreneur forever. There are hundreds to choose from. And just for the record, tech is one of hundreds, okay? That's why I keep talking about HVAC. We need more trade. The trades, oh my God, if you had this, and, you, and your ego doesn't make you look at trades like they're shitty nothings, 
you will be a millionaire like in five years. Oh, it's like it's an opportunity. They're all running this way, you run that way. 50, when you're 50, that'll make sense to you, okay? Pick the industry you love. Then you're either a product entrepreneur or you're a service entrepreneur. Rarely can you be both. I have utter disdain for product businesses. A million dollars in inventory on the shelf gives me the heebie-jeebies. It scares me. I'm not a product entrepreneur. It's okay. I have lots of clients that are product entrepreneurs. You got to decide. I'm a service entrepreneur. I love selling the invisible to the world. I love selling intangible. Got to decide which one you are. It's all in the book. You got to decide if you're a B2B or a B2C entrepreneur. Business to business, business to consumer. Do you love selling to businesses? I love selling to CEOs. I'm masterful at it. Or are you a B2C customers? I like having a handful of clients. Some people love having thousands of customers. You got to decide which one you are. Rarely can you be a both. And the marketing and sales process for both are so different. Rarely can you be both. Then you got to decide, are you premium low volume or low cost high volume? I have a client that sells light bulbs, making pennies, millions of light bulbs. I want to throw up. <laughs> but he's very wealthy selling those damn light bulbs to the world. There's nothing wrong with it. But me, I want to be the highest price in town. I want to be the highest value, highest price, second to none. That's just me and low volume. Got to figure out which one you are. You want to build a million dollar business or a billion dollar business or something in between? You got to decide. You've heard me say it a million times now. It doesn't have to be a billion dollars. It's okay. It's okay. And the last one is along the same lines. Number of people. 50 to like 150. That's my sweet spot. When it gets bigger than that, I can't touch and feel and see and know them all. It's not fun to me anymore. So that's why I sold EOS Worldwide. It's just too big. Too many balls of energy. So it's okay to want to just build a 10-person company. That's okay. It's okay. Don't get caught up in that helium of all that other BS. Just decide what's the perfect size for you. And here's the good news. If you go, well, what if I want it to be bigger? Well, here's the beauty. Let's pretend you say 50 people, 10 million, software company. That's what I want. And then when you get there, maybe you want to go bigger. But just start there. Okay. The good news is you get to decide to be bigger once you get there. So that's my biz match, and that's Glimpse, and now we're going to PATH. In PATH, what I do is I give you a bunch of awarenesses, okay? And what these awarenesses are about, so if you'll turn to, we're going to page nine, each chapter is an awareness. Each chapter is a milestone on your journey. Each chapter is something that's going to happen to you that if I can get you to know it, See it, understand it, get it in your soul. Today, it's going to be like, wow, there it is. He was right. Time to make that decision. Oh, there it is. He was right. Time to make that decision. So you can see him listed on page nine. This is where Brent's pissed off at me today. So college or not, and we do actually agree for what that's worth. So this is fun having fun like this. But you decide. And what you're going to see are all the facts. And at the end of the day, you're going to realize it's a choice for an entrepreneur because there was a time that I thought, if you're an entrepreneur, why would you go to college? I didn't go to college. But every single one of my clients, which all went to college, I asked them, did you learn anything about what you're doing as an entrepreneur from college? They all said no. But then I said, would you go back? And they all said yes because of what college did for them. They learned how to learn. They built amazing relationships that served them well now in their 50s from when they were 18 years old. It was a testing ground. And I also list all of the classes. If you are going to go to college, these are the classes you should take. And I didn't come up with those. All of those very successful entrepreneurs that went to college says, here's what I, if I could go back, these are the classes I would take. So it's a decision. You'll decide. When in doubt, go. Because if you're not an entrepreneur, you're kind of screwed. Or go into the trades. Next, where am I? Oh, I'm reading from the book. We have a PowerPoint presentation up here. <laughs> I am an entrepreneur. Number two is to discover your passion. you got to discover your passion. What is your passion? Because passion is the number one reason you're going to succeed. When you get knocked on your ass, which you're going to over and over and over and over, the only thing, it's insane, when you're laying on your back, the only thing that gets you back up is passion. 
because it's lunacy what you're doing. The odds are against you. Your family thinks you're crazy. Your significant other thinks you're crazy. Passion. And what I teach in the book is seven ways to discover your passion. Number three, PowerPoint presentation. Find a mentor. Here's the thing. Here's the study. You're going to see all the data. <clears throat> you're going to be fine without a mentor. But to have a mentor, it's like a speed pass. So when you fill out my biz match, and you know the business that you want to be in, and what you want to build, go find a successful entrepreneur who has done it, and attach yourself to them. Find 10 of them, because you're going to get nine no's. I walk through the track for how you find them, how you ask them. Go work for them for free, whatever it takes. Surround yourself. When I was 21, after working in a machine shop for three years and saved a bunch of money, I was going to take my entrepreneurial leap. I thought I wanted to open a corporate travel agency, and so I went and worked for one. Selling corporate travel with no base salary, no anything. For me, it was the worst business in the world. So anyways, it's six months in, I realized I'm not opening this business, and I got to go find another one. So that's the beauty. You're going to find out. You're going to experience it. And if that's not the business, then you go into So find a great entrepreneur. Find somebody who has done it, and just surround yourself with them. It's a speed pass. Next is take ac action and be patient. What this means is I teach a concept of 10-year thinking. All in the books, I'm giving you the fast version. But the whole idea is if you can shift your thinking from now, 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 now to thinking in 10-year time frames, time slows down, there's a peace that comes over you, you make better decisions, and you get there faster. With that said, you still have to take action, though. And this is my point. Just move forward, start doing stuff and you'll figure it out, but be very patient because you can build an empire in 10 years. And then the last on this page is a lifetime of growth, learning, motivation. So in the book, I give you books to read, podcasts to listen to, videos to watch, blogs, quotes, general advice. So those are the chapters. In addition to that, if you'll turn the page, I'm going to move through this kind of fast. And again, I want you to feel it. You're going to read the book. You'll, you'll go deeper into it. But then what I teach are eight disciplines for greatly increasing your odds of success. I'm going to try and get you to Q&A in about seven minutes here. So here they are. The first discipline is to clarify your vision. So if you remember, the mistake is that the, most entrepreneurs don't have a vision. You've got to clarify your vision. If you look to page 11, nothing to write there now. We're certainly not going to fill this out here, but I created a tool called My Vision Clarifier. And a great quote by Einstein says, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. This is a simple way to get your vision out of your head on paper, one simple page. You will know exactly what it is that you want to build, and you'll know exactly what you've got to get done in the next 90 days. Very, very, very powerful. Number two, decide if you're a partner person so vital Two types of entrepreneurs, ones that should never have a partner and ones that should have a partner. And so this is where it's good, where if you scored low, you could maybe become a partner to a true entrepreneur and build a company together. So there is that option for you. But nonetheless, you are either an entrepreneur that should have partners or shouldn't have partners. If you are an entrepreneur that shouldn't and you get a partner, you're going to unwind that relationship in the next one to 10 years, and it's going to suck. And I've helped many do it. So learn about yourself as soon as possible. It's OK to own 100% of your company and just pay people to work for you and pay them well. I've got lots of clients that do it that way. A little bit of a fallacy out there in the world that everybody needs to own equity. Ain't true. Ain't real. But if you're a partner person, there's two types of partner people. There's a partner person that needs to own controlling interest always. That's what I am. That's what I was building EOS Worldwide. I was never going to give up more than 51% because I got to make the final decision. I want it all on my back. But I have partners. So I gave up equity for partners, but I wanted controlling interest. That's the first type. The second type is that you want equal equity. If there's two of you, 50-50. If there's three of you, a third, third, and a third. If there's four of you, 25-25. You want to share the responsibility. You want partners at your side fighting with you equal ownership. Make sense? Please decide which one you are. 
Number three, know that the bigger the problem you solve in the world, the more successful you will be. So important. You cut a lawn, that's worth 25 bucks. You populate Mars, that's worth a trillion dollars. Somewhere in between, you got to decide how much value you want to bring to the world. So if you're pissed off because you're not making enough, it's because you're not providing enough value. Number four, give feedback from customers and clients early and often. Early and often. So the best feedback you can get from a customer or client is for them to cut you a check, pay you money, give you their credit card. That's the ultimate feedback, but stay close to them. Know them better than they know themselves. That's how you're going to get feedback. Don't get feedback from your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, with all due love and respect to them. Statistically, if we had of all the mothers, dads, brothers, and sisters, their advice sucks. <laughs> and there's like three of them out there that's good, good advice. And I don't know who those three are out there. Number five, know your first plan isn't your final plan. And by the way, backing up to four, just so you know, it's, it's not like they mean to give you bad advice. They just care about you so much. And they don't want you to get hurt. And they're trying to protect you. That's the worst thing. <sighs> Number five, know that your first plan isn't your final plan. So these are disciplines. The discipline is just to go, all right, oh, my plan, it's done. Oh, I did my vision clarify. Oh, it's so good. <gasps> it's going to be so great. And then you hang on to this thing and you go forward. The discipline says, know that this plan, great work, but you're going to change the whole freaking thing in about a year. Don't be so rigid. Be flexible. It's going to change. And that's why those traits are so vital. You've got to be able to bob and weave and be flexible and agile with those times. Number six, work hard, really hard. I say you have to work hard like 40 times in this book. Enough said there. Number seven, take criticism and doubt with a great assault. You're going to hear lots of, again, with your parents, your kid, your, your, your brother, your sister, you're going to hear lots of criticism. You're going to hear lots of doubt. You're going to hear lots of feedback. Take it with a grain of salt because there's actually some good stuff to glean in there. And I always like to describe it this way. If you go read 100 business books and you apply everything in those 100 business books, you will be out of business in less than six months. So your job is to glean from every business book based on your vision. You glean the stuff that makes most sense for your core values, for your soul, for who you are, for what you're trying to build. Because the billion dollar tech unicorn and the $4 million heating and cooling company very different books to read. Very, very different books to read. And then see it every night. So what I teach here is when you come up with your 10-year goal, that's on page 11, that's number five. When you come up with your 10-year goal, and it can only be one thing, you need to see it every night. When your head hits that pillow, I did it for 20 years. 10,000 companies running in EO. 10,000 companies running. You got to see it every night because when the mind's eye sees it, can't explain it to you. Don't want to get all kumbaya on you. But universal laws kick in, things line up, and you just get there faster and make it more of a reality. All right. Now we're going to move through these pretty fast. Again, high level, just want to plant some seeds. Last slide, last page, the nine stages of building your company. Again, I want you to see these stages and be ready for them. The first stage is generating cash. So one of the big mistakes here is you got a great product, you got a great service, you keep tinkering, 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 tinkering. You haven't sold anything yet. Go sell stuff. Get somebody to give you money. It's the greatest feedback you can get. Your job is to generate cash. That's job one. Do nothing but generate cash. And then when the cash is generated, you can tinker, 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 tinker. Number two, these are stages. Hiring an integrator. I put this one here because somewhere on your journey, if you're a true entrepreneur, scored 90 or higher, you are a visionary. I call it visionary. We call it visionary. Visionary entrepreneur. And if visionary needs to be counterbalanced with an integrator. At some point, as you grow the company, you are not good at holding people accountable. You're not good at the details. You're not good at running the day-to-day. -day. You need to stay up in la-la land building a great company, growing a great company with relationships and selling and problem solving and the vision. And so you need an integrator that's going to run the day to day of your business. This concept is in my book, Rocket Fuel, if you're curious to learn more about that. But you got to decide where on the journey. Some entrepreneurs are savvy enough to start their business with their integrator and they're literally paying that person. Sometimes they partner, they become 50-50 partners. Sometimes they get a little, my partner got some equity, didn't give up control, but my partner who came my integrator gave him equity. So somewhere between zero and 100 million, 
you're probably going to need an integrator, be aware. Next stage is discovering your core values. So before you hire your first person, you've got to discover your core values. Please write down think to perform. It's the number two, not T-W-O. They're core value cards. Very, very powerful. In 15 minutes, you will know your core values. Discover your core values before you hire your first person. Number four, holding yourself accountable. You've got to hold yourself accountable, especially when it's only you. And the best way to do that is two things. Number one, Come up with the three most important numbers you must hit every single week, typically revenue generating numbers, and hold yourself accountable to hit those. Number two, if you're not good at that, the best little trick is tell your significant other, and they'll hold you accountable, I like that. Uh, or a friend or a family member, so have an accountability partner that you report how you did on those numbers. Number five, communicating frequently frequently with your employees. We already covered this one. So again, as you go forward, communicate. Meet with them every week, meet with them every quarter, and give feedback quickly. You'll solve 85% of your communication issues. Number six, like we talked about in the disciplines, the discipline is to not be so rigid with your plan. The stage is someday this plan is going to change. It's either going to be somewhere between day one and year 10. It's going to be a lot closer to day one, but have your backup plan ready. If I didn't come up with a backup plan for EOS Worldwide, we would not be here together. I completely changed the business model a year and a half in because the previous one wasn't working. Have a plan B, C, and then tongue in cheek D. You don't have to go to D. A B and C was smart. Now, C was me sitting at home in my underwear at a screen. So that's, in other words, if none, none of the world wanted to hear from me, I'd work from the computer and put the content out to the world. Probably shouldn't have said it that graphically. Number seven. Staying in your personal sweet spot. So you have a God-given gift. You have a genetic encoding. You have a superpower. There's something you do very, very, very well. And your job is to discover what that is. Dan Sullivan would call that unique ability. And stay in that sweet spot. And just be careful because the organization grows. You're going to get pulled in a lot of directions. And it's going to pull you out of that sweet spot, out of that superpower. You've got to protect it. I show you how to do it in the book. But every time you add people, just keep shedding off the stuff that isn't. Keep yourself in the stuff that is. Stay in your, pers in your personal sweet spot. Number eight, preventing your business from getting away from you. We already talked about this. This is that one where you say, I'm going to build a $4 million heating and cooling company. And all of a sudden, you find yourself with 100 employees, six locations. So keep, prevent your business from getting away from you. You will get distracted by lots of shiny stuff the more successful you are. And so you got to get really good at saying no to stuff and stay in your sweet spot as a company. And number nine, capitalize on coaching, training, and mentoring. There are a ton of resources, thank God now, for entrepreneurs. And so get in these organizations. I list them all in the book, so they're there for you in the book, but get in organizations, get with peers, get trained, get coached, get mentored. It will rapidly increase your odds of success. And so I close with this. We're about to jump to Q&A. Please have your questions ready. First, the website is e-leap.com. It's on that handout. Ton of free tools. It's all free, other than the book, but you already have the book, so there's nothing to buy there. It's all free. I put out a video every week. I write an article every two weeks. It's all designed to help entrepreneurs. There's something on there called the 123 Roadmap. That's, if you click on that, it takes you through those three tools. Fill out the assessment, fill out my biz match, fill out my vision clarifier. In an hour, you will literally have a plan to start a better startup. And if you out there have an interest in joining me as a collaborator, like the two of them, please click on the Become a Collaborator button and let's join forces. And then I will leave you with this. There is no perfect way. So when I started writing this book, I, I wrestled with, is there a perfect way? So do you start up in all these books? Here's how you start a business. Here's how you, there is no perfect way. There is no book. And if somebody tells you there is, they're selling you a bill of goods. So in, being an entrepreneur is not something you do, it is something you are and it's very, very, very messy. And so I did my best. If I had to give you the process, the best I can give you is this. It's a four-step process. Here's how it works for every successful entrepreneur. You have an idea, step one. You start a business, step two. You get your ass kicked and handed to you for 10 solid years, step three. And step four, you emerge a successful entrepreneur, hopefully, because you got a 50-50 chance at best.
So there's the best process I can give you. Thank you for your time. You have been amazing. I love all those faces. Thank you. <laughs>